वेलकम टू एन पी टी एल एन ओ सी एन इंट्रोडक्टरी कोर्स ऑन पॉइंट टेपॉलॉजी पार्ट टू टुडे वी विल स्टडी सम मोर एग्जांपल्स ऑफ दिस एस नॉट एस वन एस टू एंड सो ऑन एक्चुअली वी स्टार्टेड सीन एग्जांपल्स लास्ट टाइम they were all s2 so we will continue that here is one of the important example the hilbert cube consider the hilbert space l2 over a countable family of set points namely you can take the natural numbers so recall that the space l2 consists of square summable sequences si of real number and the l2 norm there is nothing but take the sum of all the squares and then take the square root for topological reasons we will have a different look at this one indeed we are now going to consider a smaller set here namely let us start with uh, the product of you know in find countably many copies of the interval j which is minus 1 to plus 1 so let us let us say let us denote it by x x is j power n okay there are many ways to put a metric on it so what we will do is we will use uh, this l2 metric l2 norm and then there is a metric l2 so what we will do is we will take a standard embedding okay the standard means it is convention after all so a lot of people are using that in especially in analysis so what we do we take a point x here which is xi where each xi is between minus 1 and plus 1 right so we will send it to x1 the second coordinate x2 will be divided by 2 the third coordinate will be divided by 3 and so on the nth coordinate will be divided by n so this is an arbitrary sequence of real numbers between minus 1 plus 1 so this is another sequence now what happens if you take the sum of square that is convergent the sum is convergent okay so this will be an element of l2 okay x itself <laughs> is not an element of l2 is easily check that this map is a continuous bijection okay this is a continuous bijection on to the space what is that the image is all the uh, coordinates modulus of xi first of all must be less than or equal to 1 i can't go out of that but actually the ith coordinate should be in modulus less than 1 by i because look at the image here xn is already between minus plus 1 xn divided by n is less than equal to 1 by n right so if you put this condition after multiplying by i it will be still inside minus 1 plus 1 therefore that will come will be a point of x okay so that will show you that this is a bijection all right continuity of this one is uh, is obvious so it's a continuous bijection but actually the way i have defined i am defining the ith coordinate i am just multiplying it by the integer i so even the inverse function is also continuous there is no problem which just means that this map p is a homeomorphism of j power n into a subspace of the hilbert space that subspace we are denoting by this curly h and calling it the hilbert q okay the notation may be different but it is commonly agreed that this should be the hilbert q okay the name is quite standard but not the notation okay so now 
without reference to without reference to h uh, all the time we can just write down the metric which is induced by this uh, phi on x itself namely given any point x and y inside capital x distance between x and y can be defined to be just take x n minus y n take the squares divide by n square take the sum and then take the square root okay so this is the metric i don't want to write the norm here because x is not a uh, vector space any space which is homeomorphic to jn comma tau d namely what the metric induced topology here that is called a hilbert cube after all we are doing topology so anything which is homeomorphic to this is called a hilbert cube we are not very much particularly interested in the actual metric here but only on the topology and now we know that this topology is nothing but the product topology okay so quite often it is convenient to think of this one as just j power n with its uh, this h can be thought of as j power n with its product topology okay this all about uh, convention and notation the subspace qh of h of all points with rational coordinates satisfies s2 so this is what we want to say first of all it is a metric space now inside that it satisfies s2 is what i want to say to see this let jn to j be the ith projection map coordinate projection let p be any point in qh remember qh is again all the coordinates of the point here will be rational okay take any point in qh take an open subset containing p let v be a basic open set open set containing p that's the open neighbor such that p belongs to v contained inside you after all every open set you know will be containing a basic uh, neighborhood around that point so neighborhood around that point this basic neighborhood will be of the form by the very definition of the topology product topology intersection of finitely many pi i inverse of ui where i this ui is an open subset of minus 1 plus 1 the coordinate space okay finitely many of them so there will be a maximum n i can include all of them up to n no problem right okay but here i am going to choose this v such that each ui has this property namely the boundary of ui which will just consist of at most two points depending upon where the point is taken okay if the point is in the strictly in the interior the boundary of ui will consist of two points both the points must be irrational that means boundary of ui intersection q is empty okay this is done in the interval for each inter for each i up to 1 2 3 up to n then you take the inverse image of ui under pi i inverse take the finite intersection that is v automatically it will imply that boundary of v intersection qh is empty see this v is a subset of the entire j power n or you can think of h whatever i am taking h intersection with qh is empty because the boundary point at least one coordinate will be irrational because here each of them has boundary irrational okay here you have to use the elementary fact in product spaces namely 
if you have x cross y and a subset a of x b of y boundary of a cross b is equal to boundary of a cross b union a cross boundary of b use it again and again several times to go into the finite case here finite intersection case you will get this result okay so that's all for each point you can choose a neighborhood such as boundary is empty means what that neighborhood will define a partition a separation of the point with the complement namely you start with the u right they are separated now so that is the property s2 so we have we have verified we have got another example namely subset of all points with uh, all coordinates rational inside the hilbert cube is also s2 exactly similarly we can show that ih inside h is also ira no is also s2 what is ih all the coordinates of the all the points are irrational okay so you can reverse the role here that is fine in contrast the subspace ql of all points whose coordinates are all rational in the entire hilbert space l2 does not satisfy s2 okay so this is what we want to prove inside the smaller set namely compact set this uh, h this is working but if you go to the entire l2 so unbounded thing there s2 is not satisfied okay so we will have examples of spaces which doesn't satisfy s2 okay so once again how do you show how do you show that something is not s2 it suffices to prove that the boundary of any bounded open neighborhood of zero in ql is non empty okay so at at zero you can prove that you can't have such a thing you can't separate zero by open subsets uh are uh, uh, by close subsets it can do not contain zero then over okay so i am going to show that take a bounded open neighborhood u of zero okay then its boundary is non empty inside ql not inside inside uh, inside l2 it's obvious inside ql you have to show it's non empty okay So in other words, you take the entire boundary intersect with QL. It is non-empty. So what happens? Okay. So this is done as follows. So let me show you the picture here first. So this is origin. Of course, my picture cannot contain infinitely many coordinates. So you have to think of this one as infinitely many, infinitely many, infinitely many, one at a time, something like that. so this is the origin this is u is a bounded neighborhood of the origin i start with on on the x axis in the first one a1 axis or x1 axis i take a point a1 okay inside u may may i don't have to take uh, the the zero itself okay take one point be sure in the inductive process i want to do that something so be sure that this a1 is not far away from the complement of u okay it's not far away from the complement of u that means what let us say distance between a1 and the complement complement is a closed set let us say it is less than 1 okay this distance is less than 1 next i keep this first coordinate a1 moving to the r2 
So, keeping the first coordinate a1 as it is, I choose a2 so that this this point is again closer to the boundary. So, this was a1 I have chosen. So, here I will choose it is 1 by 2. This I have 1. Here I will choose 1 by 2. So, distance between a1 a2 and the boundary and the outside uh, outside of the u complement is less than 1 by 2. Now, how do I do that? So, this is an open subset. Okay. So, I keep moving inside this uh, this arrow okay something some all the entire arrow may not be there but there will be some point here as close as possible keep moving okay having chosen a n a to a n a n plus 1 will be chosen first a n a to a n coordinates will be the remain the same the nth coordinate will be chosen so that the distance of this point to the boundary or to the complement is less than 1 by n. Okay, so, that is what I am doing here. Okay, we are inductively we construct a sequence p n is a 1 0 0 0 a 2 a 1 a 2 0 0 0 like this a 1 a 2 a n 0 0 0 of points inside you such that distance between p n and the complement is less than 1 by n. It then follows once I have once I have got this one, it then follows that the limit sequence, namely a1, a2, a n, okay, this p is actually in the boundary of u because all these these things are inside u, so this will be inside u bar, but it is a distance between uh, this p and complement of u is zero because it is less than 1 by n for all n. Therefore, this will be both in u and uh, u bar and complement of u bar. So, it is inside boundary. Okay. So, how it is done? I have already explained it to you. Okay. So, let me read that one. Consider the linear space P1 set of all x n belonging to L2 such that all the nth coordinate beyond that one are 0 that is the x 1 axis you can say. Clearly, p 1 intersects both u and u complement see because u is bounded because u contains the origin. So, this line has to intersect u because it is u is bounded it has to intersect the complement. So, this is the property I am using. Or on that subspace, there will be a point inside you very close to you, you, you complement as close as this is what I have to use. So, pick up P1, A1 belong to you such that distance is less than 1. Having chosen Pn, the same thing, look at Pn plus 1, it is all xi inside L2 such that the ith coordinates are all 0 beyond n plus 2. Okay, up to n plus 1 coordinates are there, x i must be a i as chosen up to n. Okay. This subspace just this is now just a line now. You see, if I fix up all the nth coordinates, only n plus 1 coordinate is free. So, that line okay, will intersect this point a 1 a 2 a n, it go passes through that and it will go out of u c because u is uh, bounded. So, we pick up x n plus 1 equal to a n plus 1 and take p n plus 1 equal to a n plus 1 such that this distance. All that I have to do this one is intersect this line with u and u complement. So, work inside the real line to, to get a such a point that is all. Okay. Once the that coordinate is chosen properly, distance between a n up to a n plus 1 and the new coordinate, so the, the sorry a n and a n plus 1 is only depends only on this point, because you have to take a i minus cor corresponding a i, that this will be 0, only a n plus 1 square has to be less than 1 by n square, that is all.
okay so that is uh, done so now we will have some theorems okay so what we have done we have shown uh, one example wherein it is not s2 also it is a matrix space it is a it is an entire hilbert space so hilbert space does not satisfy the, the ql does not satisfy the s2 property now is a theorem if x is lindelof then s2 implies s3 remember that we have we have assumed that all our spaces are t1 right from the first lecture on this topic right but just to remind you i have put t1 in the bracket here okay if x is lindelof then s2 implies s3 the proof is somewhat similar to what we had done long back maybe theorem 2.5 that a regular lindelof space is normal however for completeness we include the proof here okay because we are not exactly doing normality here nor we are exactly using regularity both both are stronger hypothesis s2 is stronger than regularity s3 is stronger than normality so let us go through this proof carefully take f1 and f2 two disjoint closed subsets of x then x is union of their complements because they are disjoint okay therefore given x inside x either x is inside f1 c or x is inside f2 c maybe it is in both doesn't matter one of them will uh, uh, will be there always accordingly choose a clopen set ux around x such that this ux intersects fj is empty accordingly i told you if it is first one see x1 x is inside f1 c so i can choose ux intersection f1 empty if x is inside f2 c i'll choose ux intersection f2 is empty so this is by s2 the property s2 uh, assures you that such a clopen subset exists okay for each point i have chosen a ux therefore this x is union of all the uxs and each of them is open x is lindelof implies we have a countable subtower here all right now we define a new family of clopen subsets remember this is open they are both open as well as closed also okay so how do i do it inductively this kind of steps are same as what we have done in proving regular lindelof implies normality the this step is same thing v1 is u1 v2 is whatever you have taken then v1 okay you subtract that v1 so it is u2 minus v1 like that vn will be un minus whatever you have taken earlier namely union of all the i rank to 120 ui okay i can write here vi is also because v1 is u1 v1 union v2 will be union in u2 and so on so you can do this way this is also correct now what we have is each vi is disjoint from other vi vj so it's a disjoint family each vi is clopen why because being finite union this is also clopen and this is clopen open minus closed is open closed minus open is closed so this will be clopen so each vi is our clopen subset and we have written x as disjoint union of countably many clopen subsets moreover each vi i remember here what is written un minus something so vi is contained inside ui 
and then vi intersection f y will be zero because u i intersection f y is zero for j equal to one or two accordingly. You don't know where they are coming from. There are two classes of them, right? Depending upon whether it is f corresponding u x u i corresponds to one of the u x where x is inside f one c or inside f two c. Okay. The entire family of V i s is divided into two families accordingly. Okay, according to whether V i intersects F i, okay, i equal to uh, j equal to one or two is each not j. V i intersects F j is non-empty. Now take W one to be union of all those V i s. The set V i intersection F one is non-empty. Okay, and other things are W two, namely all the V i s is V i intersection F one is empty. So I have taken all the V i s here. Some of them are here, some of them are there, and they are disjoint families. It follows that X is a union of W one and W two. W one intersection W two is empty because every V i here and V j here, they they don't intersect. Being unions of Clopen sets, W one and W two are both open. That is enough actually. They are Clopen also, and F one will be inside W one now. Okay, because F one does not intersect any of them, but F one is contained in the union, so it must be inside W one. F two by very definition has to be inside W. Okay, the rest of them has to be W. Okay, so what we have done is writing X as disjoint union of two open sets. This is a partition. This, this is a separation now, right? F one inside W one, F two inside. So that is the property S three. Okay. In conclusion, we know that a Lindelof T1 space S2 implies S3, but we have already proved S3 implies S2 as soon as this T1 space. So these two are equivalent. However, even if X is a separable metric space, the three of them here earlier one S0. S1 and S2, they are in equivalent. Okay, proof is not all that easy. In a T1 space, we we have seen that S2 implies S1 implies S0. So you assume it is separable metric space. Even then, you can't go back in these arrows. That is the meaning of this one. Okay, so we will have examples finally. So here is one example, which is which is not a metric space, okay, but it is an easy example. Start with a countably infinite family, infinite set with a discrete topology. That is my n tau. Now take extra points a and b, so n disjoint in a and b. That is my x. Okay. Now I want to put a topology tau hat on this x. Okay. This will consist of all the members of tau along with. All subsets y of x, which intersect A B, and such that x minus y is finite. Intersect A B means they should contain either A or B or both. Okay. But then the complement of that y inside x must be finite. Okay, check that this becomes 
this definition makes tau hat a topology on x not very difficult this kind of thing we have done several times now for each x if x is inside n then it is discrete topology so it is both open and closed in x because all the open subsets in tau they are inside tau hat also so they are all components if a singleton set is both open and closed that estimates will must be component right any subset larger than ab is disconnected can you see that take ab itself okay as a subspace of n as a subspace of x what is the topology on this one as a subspace it is discrete space okay therefore singleton ab itself is disconnected therefore anything larger than ab will be also disconnected so this shows that this topology to had is totally disconnected all the points are singleton points are uh, uh, components all the components are singletons okay however this is not a t1 space at all is not even a t1 space why because take any neighborhood of a inside x not ab ab if you take as subspace that is discrete but a and b as subspace as elements of tau hat any neighborhood the complement is finite any neighborhood of b complement is finite n is infinite so a intersection that u intersection v will be non empty so that is similar to this cofinite topology therefore this is a not a t1 space so this a and b are there just to make it non t1 space okay but this is totally disconnected space that is the reason we don't want to study such a Uh, anomalous example that is why we are putting assume t oneness right in the beginning okay so i have repeated it here so the same thing will tell you that of course it is not ausdorf either because neighborhoods of a and b are not disjoint in particular it does not satisfy sorry <coughs> sorry this is t1 but it is not t2 okay i want a t1 still it is not uh, good that is a whole idea hence x is not hausdorff that is the point because members of open subsets around a and open subsets around b they always intersect okay if it is not hausdorff it cannot be s1 s1 is stronger than ausdorfness okay so it is a totally disconnected space it is not s1 next time we will have within the metric spaces such examples but for that we have to work very hard but this is a very well known example in topology knaster kuratowski example okay so that we will study next time